Today, uh, we'll talk about the MySQL <coughs> upgrade uh, best practices. Why doesn't it work? Okay, it does. So, uh, what we'll uh, do in this presentation is to look at the different types of upgrade, discuss when uh, you should uh, upgrade, and then, well, maybe it's uh, <coughs> good to say it on the release where you are. The issues you can discover during upgrade, and we'll uh, take a look at the uh, process what you can go through during upgrade in reasonable level of detail. Yeah. So, first of all, I'd like to ask you, let's say, do you guys ever have done any MySQL upgrades in your... Okay, so you experienced a bunch of people. Uh, any of you had done one major MySQL version upgrade? Two? Three? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> now, did you get any surprises during upgrade? Did you say, like, oh, I thought upgrade would go smooth and this thing just surprising didn't work? No one? The upgrade just went all smoothly? No problems at all? Then what are we doing here? I mean, just <laughs> come on and drive it out. Right. Did you ever have to roll back after upgrade? You upgraded and had to go back and say, no, that didn't quite work. Anyone? Okay, well, oh, we have some. Okay, good. So not everybody is upgrade version here. That's good to hear. Okay. So uh, it's, I would note what, uh, when you talk about the upgrade, uh, this is really just one of a kind of uh, version changes, right? <coughs> so that, what I speak in here in Upgrade would apply the same if you would need to downgrade for some reason, right? Or if you're moving between, let's say, MySQL and Percona server or MariaDB and what's not, right? When you are doing significant software changes, the process is essentially the same, right? Upgrade, uh, in most cases, is uh, not going to be different, right? Or if you have to downgrade it for some reason again, the process will be uh, often the same. What do we see as a reasons right, why people uh, need to upgrade or, or want to upgrade? Well, uh, one is, of course, the bugs in old version, right? You run into a bug, well, uh, channels I want to upgrade. Security problems in old version, right? And I put those separately because then bugs are something, let's say, which hurt us right now. Let's say your MySQL started crashing. Security problems they don't necessarily manifest themselves in any way, right? But they expose us to risk or somebody will take advantage of that. New version benefits, that is another one, right? We often would like to take advantage of some new features. Uh, and I think for my school use case, what is a lot more frequent is uh, getting benefits of uh, better scalability and performance in your versions, right? That is what people very often look at their upgrade. Another important reason I see is just keeping up to date with recent technology. Because if you guys will be looking at the MySQL, let's say, 323, I think there are very, very few people who actually know much about that, right? And it's really hard to remember what was in that release and so on and so forth. But you have to deal with some systems which are running on very old MySQL version, it always exposes you to some risks because we have some bugs which you already remember as they have been fixed long time ago and so on and so forth. Right? Also, for essentially the same reason, the support becomes limited. And I'm not only uh, talking about, let's say, official support, like, well, if you, you're running MySQL 3.23, there is no new binaries, right, even for security features but also about the support uh, any vendor out there will be able to provide you. Because they simply don't have as much experience right, with that version anymore. So their knowledge becomes stale, and if you come to them with some very old version related problems, they wouldn't be as helpful, right? So that uh, essentially increases your risk as well. In which cases I think you may consider just staying on the version you're running. Well, I would say it is when you have application which is kind of on a isolated network. 
but it doesn't talk to anything, so it doesn't expose to the security issues you may have, right, in your versions. That is one of the thing, reasons it may not be, uh, upgrade may not be needed. When application is not being actually developed, right, you have some application which had its last change five years ago, well, chances are it's fine to run out of the MySQL release which was released five years ago, right? Because, well, it, uh, there are the chances for it to get broken with new MySQL releases, right? And you may not have, uh, and it may be very costly, right? Or sometimes even impossible to uh, do changes in applications which is, which is essentially, it's, which is in production but no longer <coughs> actually maintained. Application not growing rapidly, that is another reason, right, which sort of contradicts our uh, need for high performance. If your application performance is good, even though you're running MySQL 4.1, there may not be a reason for you to upgrade if your application load and data size just stays the same, right? Why bother? And another uh, item is, of course, the changes in platform operation system. A lot of um, old a lot of newer platforms, they simply don't provide builds for all the uh, operating systems, right? For all the versions. And if you are not doing the uh, platform changes, right, then uh, you have a less need of uh, upgrade. Now, I don't want you to uh, see those cases like, oh, if my application is on an isolated network, then there is no reason for me to upgrade ever. It is just what conditions which reduce your kind of need on upgrade in this kind of a risk reward scenario, right, with upgrading or uh, Austin the uh, old version. And I can tell as a summary, as I have seen tons of applications which run some MySQL which is three, five years old and which just works fine, right, didn't went down for years, just works in hammer launch, right, and you don't have to fix what is, pro uh, what is broken. Okay. Now, which one of upgrades are risky and which are not. I would say what there is inherent risk to any code changes, right? When a code is changes, there are chances that there are some bugs which you will be uh, exposed to, right? Uh, in the end, upgrades uh, to ma major upgrades like MySQL 5.1 to 5.5 are more uh, risky than minor version upgrades. I would also treat any sort of, let me call it vendor changes as a major upgrade. Let's say if you upgrade from MySQL 5.1 to Perconda Server 5.1, right, or to MariaDB 5.1, even if uh, a lot of us try to maintain compatibility of MySQL, we do changes, sometimes significant changes, right, then there are chances what something would go wrong, right? So. And that should do it appropriately. Jumping many minor versions is another case which is essentially similar to uh, the major upgrades because there are a lot of changes accumulated by those incremental changes. Let's say minus score 5120 to, to, to 5162, well, that will be many years worth of work, right? And there is high chance that some of those minor and safe changes will actually impact you in some way. Then MySQL 5160 to 5161 upgrade is a lot less risky business. Another important uh, thing uh, I would note here is upgrade from PGA version. Why? Because until version reaches state of GA, it typically can be getting some incomparable changes right before, uh, without much uh, thought given into that, right? Because it is assumed what pre-GA versions are not recommended to be run in production. You can do it in many cases, right? And you and they just can work just fine, but uh, keep in mind what upgrade path from those uh, have to be tested carefully because some features may be even dropped from a new release, right? Because they just never stabilized. Finally, I will mention what uh, jumping through one or several versions is possible, but again, uh, improves your risks. Not only because there are many more changes this way, but also because a lot more people 
upgrade one major version at a time than people who skip through through a version, right? Like going from 4.1 to 5.5 or even from 5.0 to 5.5. Uh, to okay. So, and now we look to, uh, to frame it, and our way to frame it is to see what could be typical reasons, right, for your uh, upgrade project. And I especially frame it as an upgrade project because, uh, well, any upgrade is likely to be a significant project and it will cost a significant amount for your business, right, to, uh, to perform that. It's with bug or performance issue. It could be also concerns with bug, which can potentially affect you, right? Sometimes you can say, oh, uh, I don't, uh, my MySQL is not crashing yet, but I have just seen the, the bug in the change log, which looks like something similar in my case, so I don't want to wait until I'm affected. Let me do that. Security concerns or generally keeping up with the recent, uh, recent versions. Which kind of pieces of a puzzle do we have to consider when we upgrade? Well, first is, of course, the data, right? We want to move the data from old version to a new version, and we want data to stay the same. How boring, right? We don't want it to become corrupted. We don't want it to become different, none of the both. We want our queries, reads and writes, to have the same results, right, and uh, to be the same performance. We want uh, the performance and scalability to improve, right, in general. At least we don't want to have performance regressions when some things become slower. We want replication to work. We also want uh, a system to use, uh, the, let's say, comparable amount of resources, right? We don't want to use a lot more memory. Okay. So let's look at the data related issues. Well, the biggest one is, of course, is on these format changes, uh, which do happen. In most cases, MySQL uh, maintains pretty good level of compatibility in this case. For example, uh, even though new MySQL version add things, let's say, as Barracuda format for NNDB, you don't have to have that or use that. I mean, you can still run the old uh, anti the format just fine, right? Changes to MySQL data types, that is another uh, important item. And I don't think we had any significant data type changes in five, uh, 1 to 5.5, five, five, for example. But before that, we had like decimal format changes in one version or uh, uh, changes uh, in some in daytime format. In this case, so what happens in many cases is MySQL tries to maintain compatibility as well, and it still may uh, maintain the old data type, right, and able to read that. It just when you create their tables with a new data type, right, it will uh, create the new tables that will use the new replacement for that uh, data type. Sorting order changes that is one of, I think, the biggest uh, changes which we had in uh, MySQL 5.0 to 5.1 and 5.1 to 5.5, right? Because MySQL was finding the bugs or with collations, right, when some order was not quite uh, standard, and they fixed those. But when they, they fixed those, they changed the sorting order. That means what your indexes become wrong and they have to be re rebuilt, right? So when you do check for upgrade, well, that is one of the biggest reasons of, uh, of what it says. Oh, this table needs to be checked and it needs to be repaired because it needs to be rebuilt indexes with a potentially wrong sort of order, right? Okay. Another uh, thing is uh, data presentation issues. Right. Uh, we had a number of cases when uh, timestamp for a while back, for example, change how it presented, or when you have some varchar type with, let's say, tabs in the end, right? The same data could be presented a little bit differently. Right? So this, again, can be uh, very rare and age cases, right? And you're saying, what are you talking about? Why is that important? Well, 
because unknowingly for you, your application may be dependent on something like that. We had cases, for example, when uh, you cannot insert the data back in the database because two values, which are considered different, are unique, uh, are considered different, right now uh, are considered to be the same, right? Or, or uh, things like that, right? Or your application may uh, still function properly because of uh, uh, similar stuff. Changes to limits, this is another uh, uh, important item. And what it corresponds to and saying, okay, how long, let's say, my string can be, right? Or how long, uh, how many indexes I can have. In a lot of cases, uh, these are actually changing in positive direction. My school adding support for more indexes, more uh, tables, and so on and so forth. But that's not only uh, the case. In MySQL uh, plugin, right, MySQL 5.5 or in 5.1 plugin, for example, we get uh, in a DB uh, changes which would not be able to store some data which previously was able to be stored, right? So that's something that uh, you may be triggered. Reserved keywords, that is another uh, issue which is quite uh, simple, but well, new versions, they introduce mm, new reserved keywords, at least potentially. So chances are uh, <coughs> the previous names for tables or columns or what's not you use may not work anymore. Right. Again, the probability of that is small, but you need to check that. I think it's especially interesting is uh, what if you do drop in a pre upgrade, right? You do not, let's say, run in. Um, like MySQL dump and load. Well, in most cases, it will continue to work, but some of the queries which don't quote the columns, right, they may stop working because the columns become reserved keywords and now would need to be quoted by backticks in order to work, right? So you may have these reserved keywords in the data actually only exposed by some queries which stop running. So it could be interesting dependence in the thing. Oh yes, and the statistics. Uh, that is also something uh, interesting or related to a really query execution. But different versions have, have different ways they compute statistics, which can, in the end, cause different query execution plans and so on and so forth. Okay. Issues with queries. What may have, have uh, happened here? Well, first, you can have syntax that has changed. So queries, let's say, stopped working. That uh, may happen. You can have a query which has different result, which could be uh, in uh, actually three different cases, right? It may be some bug was fixed, right? Or some bug was introduced, that's right? essentially the same stuff, right? You can have changes in the query meaning. For example, when we change from MySQL 4.1 to 5.0, the interpretation of a draw and order in MySQL changed. So the same query could be interpreted differently now, right? In terms of operation priorities. You also can have non-deterministic queries. Let's say as you do have some selective limit, but if no order by. This is non-deterministic query, and if MySQL changes plan, it, it will produce different results, well, and your application may unknowingly for you depend on the previous result. Another concern which I will be watching is query producing warnings or errors, right, for whatever uh, reason that could be. <coughs> when we look at the performance, uh, we can see the following few items. We look at the query execution time, that is the most simple and easy to understand. We also want to look at the query plan changes and review those. Why would we do that? Because even if uh, performance may be staying the same, uh, different plans are at risk and we want to evaluate that to understand. Maybe the new plan wouldn't scale well, right? Maybe it, it's working right now, but that exposes us to the risk if the data size increases, right? Performance and concurrency, at concurrency that is another important point, right? Because uh, in many cases you may have uh, performance which is 
uh, fine if you just run test queries standalone, but at the high concurrency, you may be exposed to some new hotspots, right, or, or, or what's not. Now, when you're using replication to get a very few MySQL, you also have to be looking at how you upgrade impact replication. Can your workload be still replicated, right? Because chances are, I'll, let's say, as new uh, MySQL version actually had a lot safer MySQL replication, so some statements may now uh, be unsafe to log in statement level replication, right? So they may refuse to replicate or require a, low, a row level replication. Or you may have some potential problems with uh, data drift, right? What you don't see any errors and warnings, right? But just data on the slave is different. And in addition to this, being ability to consistently replicate your workload, you also should be looking at the performance. Because again, because of the query changes, the plan changes, or anything else, it is possible what replication performance may still become slower, right? And you may be looking at the performance bottleneck out there. Then you spoke about the resource usage standpoint. I would say memory is the main resource to care here, but it's not the only one. Temporary space, that could be, uh, let's say, on a hard drive, right? Or that could be another example. We have changes in uh, versions, for example, which uh, required a lot more sort space than before, right? And that means more space had to be provisioned for TMP uh, location. But memory is, of course, the main resource we would care. Chances are a new version may, even though it employs the more effective algorithms, may be using more memory, and that means... Oh. So, chances are, uh, even though it, it may require more memory, and that means you may need to resize your buffers and so on and so forth, right? It also may have memory leaks, right? That is not very frequent, but it happens. Sometimes it's really like a memory leak. Sometimes it's what I would call like unbound memory fragmentation. So it's not technically a leak, right? Because, well, uh, all the memory is kind of accounted for. But because of how allocation happens, uh, the MySQL just tends to grow larger and larger in memory, right? Which is essentially from user level standpoint the same stuff. Another thing to think here is, what is that? Is that this microphone which? Okay, let me stay away from it. Okay, so um, another thing is, when you have some, using some complex MySQL, uh, MySQL procedures, like store procedures functions, plugins, triggers, events, you, there are more things to break, right? Uh, between versions, especially if that is something uh, of code level, like plugins or maybe some special storage engine. Well, it may not even kind of uh, it, it it may not be code compatible, right? If a new reason that you have to really uh, really check careful uh, carefully. But I would pay special attention to uh, to all of those, and as because as you would see. We are not really covering a lot of those in the uh, kind of next test steps that I will be going through. Now, what do we do when we have to upgrade multiple environments? In a lot of cases, we would have at least, let's say, development stage and production environments, right? If you have some serious application. How do we upgrade those and in which sequence? I have seen people running in trouble all kind of different ways, like let's say you the upgrade process takes a couple of weeks or whatever, right? And your development is going at the same time, you may have a couple of different scenarios. What is possible is what you uh, upgrade your development first, right? And your developers already start using, let's say, MySQL 5.5, and well, introduce some features which don't really work on your old MySQL 5.0 anymore. Well, bad, right? But you don't want reverse either. Because if uh, they're testing on 5.1, it's possible for they get some uh, versions, right, which wouldn't be safe to upgrade. So what you typically would have to do in this case, right, is, well, 
Staging is easy, right? You would kind of upgrade that before or very close to production. With development, uh, it is best if you can sort of clone your update environment and kind of have development and all the new version which you can let developers to test yeah. both of those. Right. For drop-in replacements, now I will go and go through relatively complex uh, process, right? And you may wonder, okay, I have just like this small application. Do I really have to spend those, let's say, 25 steps, right? Well, in a lot of cases, if your system is small, you may not really care about downtime. Well, you can actually just do drop-in replacement, right? There are possibilities to uh, do that safer, right, of course. And one of them uh, is to use something as uh, LVM snapshots. Right? I have provided the, a link where you can lose uh, details. Uh, take the take a look at details. One of the great features in the new LVM in Linux, you can actually promote snapshots to their uh, kind of use snapshots for rollback, right? Without copying any data, and this is very handy because what that allows me is, uh, if let's say I have some my personal website and I can take some downtime of that, right? What I can do is can create an LVM snapshot, do upgrade, play with that a little bit. And if it didn't work, and I can just revert back to a previous state of data and run all my school version on it. <coughs> what is handy here is it allows us to shrink the time of uh, downtime for very large databases. If you're having very small database, you don't really need that because you can just take a dump, right, or back up in our way, and if things doesn't work, you need to restore. Also, we use, even for complex systems, drop-in replacement often for sharded systems. After we've validated and tested uh, the upgrade process on many shards and figured out, well, that is actually safe, and all we need to do is, try, let's say, upgrade MySQL binaries and run MySQL upgrade, and that's it, well, it's fine to start doing upgrade, uh, uh, drop-in kind of upgrade if I was major testing it. But in majority of cases, what we'll look is uh, the upgrade process which uses replication significantly. I will also mention what if you are in the cloud, this is one of the cases where uh, upgrade is really a lot of easier slash more convenient. Why is that? Well, because cloud allows us to relatively inexpensively increase size of our system. When I'm upgrading in the cloud, I can essentially build the complete copy of environment, right? With even, let's say, web servers, wherever I need, if I want to. And it's not really expensive if you do it just for a week, right? And then I, uh, I can do as much of uh, extra resources as I need relatively uh, inexpensively. <coughs> when we are having, uh, let's say, non-cloud environment, then in this case, we often have to uh, be a lot more constrained in the amount of uh, additional resources we use. Another good question you may be asking in upgrade is to say, okay, well, that system is five years old, right? And when I'm upgraded, I consider not only upgrading MySQL, but on also operating system, uh, you know, hardware, maybe application code and what's not, right? What do we think about that? Right? Well, in this case, I don't think there is a answer right for for that which is right for everything what you can say well if you are just moving to a new environment right from everything old to everything new in a lot of cases you will be able to spend a lot more time testing that right uh, which can be good on the other hand your risks can be significantly higher as well right because the more pieces you change the more things you break and what is also very bad uh, downside here is, well, if something breaks, you won't know what to, to blame, right? We have been seeing so many cases when people, let's say, would move to different MySQL version, different operation system with different MySQL configuration, and they will come to us and say, oh, well, 
oh, let's say it's it's MySQL version to blame, right? Your Percona server doesn't work, right? And we will look at that, but it, it, and the problem would actually be related to the settings we changed, right? Or the hardware which uh, they choose, right? The very uh, typical <laughs> mistake is actually when people try to get the new hardware, they get why the hardware, right? So they get a lot more cores, but every core is slower. Right? And in this case, very frequently, you will get uh, slower performance, right? Especially for uh, some operations. Okay. Now, for some of us, upgrade is as simple as yeah, update, right? It kind of does in place upgrade and it just works. I will take month. Uh, uh, months to upgrade, right? And I would say both of them are valid approaches, and you have to balance and understand what exactly uh, is this application, how risk averse are you, right? I mean, we probably heard it from a Facebook today, right? And uh, they're still in my school 5.1, well, at light extent, because that's so painful, right, to really do the whole <laughs> upgrade process, right? I think the last time it, it, it took a year, right, or more to go from 5.0 to 5.1. I think that they spoke about that in one of the previous events. Okay. Upgrading right. replication, right? So the trick of the, the common wisdom with MySQL replication is what you want to upgrade slaves first. Right? And then what you're able to do with that is to uh, switch slave to a master and uh, do upgrade in, in the back, right? In a lot of cases, what may be handy is uh, if you have a pair, you can set up complete upgraded pair, like like uh, in this case. We can see the more, there was MySQL 5.1 set up and we upgraded to 5.1. I can set up upgraded MySQL 5.1 to 5.1 pair and replicate to that. What that essentially allows me uh, to test is both 5.1 replication and 5, uh, 5.1 to 5.5 and 5.5 uh, to 5.5 replication at the same time, right? What is also good with such setup is that I can, uh, when I fail over, I can simply reverse the, uh, where the traffic flows, right? Uh, and if my 5.5 fare is malfunctioning for any reason, it's very easy for me to go back. I already have my, uh, say, complete replicated environment set up on the old version. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes? The problem I could say is your backup server, you have a backup server and you're doing binary backups, right? You're mm -hmm. upgrading your backup server to 5.5. You can only restore to 5.5, right? Say you're using extra backup and you're backing up binary Well, uh, that is a good question, right? So there are, in many cases, you actually can sort of downgrade as well, right? That is one of the cases what I would normally suggest not go into enable new storage features, right? In the new version at once, uh, right? But uh, see uh, where you can uh, stick to the features which are exist in both versions, so you can downgrade as a binary, right, if you have to. But uh, you're gonna find a point, right? That's not always possible, and what that means is what uh, you want to ensure to have some old backup which are restorable, right, for this version, uh, and uh, have long enough binary logs, right, so you can roll forward that in emergency. Now, what we also shouldn't forget, though, is in the ma majority of cases, right, even if I, let's say, have MySQL 5.5, and I need to downgrade to 5.1. They also have MySQL dump. And MySQL dump, that is something which is, you can go back with that, right? In the worst case, you have some, un some unsupported options, but that is nothing, say, a little, little bit of all right, or peril can fix. Okay. Now, as I mentioned uh, briefly, if you are upgrading a sharded environment, you actually, uh, can often take shortcuts, right? You have 20, 50, whatever shards to upgrade. You probably are not going to perform uh, the same full-blown testing for each shard, especially if they 
essentially have the same, you know, absolutely the same query partner. Typically, we test that to, uh, with multiple shards and then use uh, this kind of opportunity to create something like a runbook for exactly step of a process which is safe, which can be then applied to, uh, the, to you know, different charts. Okay, so let's look at the process in the details, what you can be doing when you do an upgrade. First thing that I will start with is to read the release notes or change logs, to really understand what changes have been done. That often can give you a lot of food for thought or point out the features which you are, let's say, heavily using and which may uh, give you concern. Right? Changes are available in my school manual, right, and both MariaDB and Performance are also in know, change log. Now, also when you speak about the major releases, they come with a good summary. Let's say in MySQL 5.5 was released, you get the MySQL in the natural in 5.5, which mentions summary of changes in MySQL 5.5, right? Very, very helpful. <coughs> now, what you have uh, typically do is to do some preliminary testing. Often, before you kind of commit to full-blown upgrade process, we, you just want to get a quick feel, right? How does it look, right? Maybe you set up a QI environment if a new release, new in place upgrade, right? Or MySQL dump and load, do you see any problems? And I think that gives you a very good feel for how much problems you would expect, right? Sometimes you can say, oh my gosh, it looks like it works, right? No problems at all. And sometimes you would see, even from a glance look, where there are all kind of problems. Right? That helps you really to understand the amount of effort. Adjust my school configuration. Often, you will need to change some uh, settings in MySQL because of uh, your old MySQL file wouldn't work or wouldn't work as, as you, you expect it to, to be, right? But I would suggest when you are doing upgrade process, try to limit the changes you are doing to focus only on what is necessary. You can always tune performance later. Right? Again, minimize changes where you can. What you may be looking at here is, well, with, uh, removing deprecated options, right? Or adjusting to the new, uh, new variants. Some options are getting deprecated in my school wouldn't start with uh, those options. You may also want to adjust defaults you rely on. Let's say if you are uh, using MySQL 5.5 and have a lot of create table or create temporary table without specifying storage engine, you may be surprised with uh, them create as an ADB because in ADB became default, right? So you may want to go back to all default, right? If you do, or go ahead and change your application to always specify storage engine. You also want to change your options which are hard to change later, right? Or often impossible. For example, if you want to load all your data in Barracuda format, well, you are better off set that in very beginning, right? The same would apply to InnoDB file per table. If you loaded your data to a single table space, well, you can't then go back easily to uh, file per table, right? You'll have to dump your data uh, and load it back. Finally, you may want to change your options for new compatibility environments. But one of the uh, common problem is what in MySQL 5.5, you would, uh, you would see it committed wouldn't work with state based replication. Right. What's that? It works in 5.1. Huh? I don't think recommitted works with state based replication in 5.1. Well, uh, in MySQL 5.1, uh, uh, this is very common, right? That uh, change was done in the middle, right? So for some 5.1 versions, it, it may work. For some newer one, it was more restricted. Right? Make sense? But in, in any case, right? So let's say if you're upgrading from MySQL 5.0 to 5.5 to be direct, right, then you will be, for surprise, like you have to change things like this, right, to work. Moving the data, how you can uh, do that? Well, the first one is MySQL dump based. You can 
dump your data and import it right, uh, right back. Now, if you are uh, working in a very small database or something, that is actually can be a very uh, good approach because, well, it actually defragments the data. It includes, well, everything is created with the newest data structures and so on and so forth, right? As well as, you know, over time, you can get some minor data inconsistency and kind of just like crap accumulated over time, right? I mean, there could be some or orphan, orphan in a DB temporary tables which are created and left somewhere, right? Or, or, or whatever. MySQL dump allows you to clean that up, right? And I especially like that when you have like re looking at really old databases, right? When you, if you do in place upgrade, let's say 4.0 to 4.1, then 4.1 to 4.5.0, and so on and so forth, right? Well, chances are it may be time for, you know, complete sweep. MySQL upgrade, there is no way. You can rely on this very helpful functionality which will, you'll start with new server, new binaries, and then run MySQL check, uh, or MySQL upgrade, right? The script which will check the tables for compatibility and repair slash rebuild them. Typically, that will take a, uh, a fraction of the time of what uh, MySQL dump takes, but it still can be taken hours in some cases. Yeah? Have you seen MySQL upgrade, say, find, and then not find? Well, uh, I have seen that, but uh, rather rarely. Right. So one of the uh, things, I have seen it, um, I think, like in the re really old cases, like the database is very old. It's still seven minutes left, and she's still showing me five minutes. Confusing. Okay. Check what the data is the same, right? So, in both cases, you may have a data which starts to look uh, a little bit different, right? Even in my school dump case, well, there are some problems people experience with certain like weirdly formatted blobs, or some floating point times may. Uh, change their textual representation, right, after dump and restore, so uh, you have to be careful. And it's good to check the data, right? How do we do it? Well, you can have two servers, right? So on one you get a, let's say, backup restored, on the other you have the same backup you upgrade, and you can check which are uh, insane. What is also uh, important to understand here is what check some table itself it has been changed with different version, and sometimes it may return different checksums for the same data. We have been you know, beaten by that more than once. What you can do in this case, if you can use PT table checksum, and that, uh, that tool kind of requires you setting up the boxes as master and slave, or in MK table checksum, it actually has a tool to also compare to standalone server, right? Service with no rela uh, relation between those. So that is one of the good ways to do it. When you're saying about checksum, is it between 5.1 and 5.5? Well, uh, the, checksum, the checksum table will surely, surely change it between 5.0 and 5.1, yeah. right? I, I know about that. I'm not sure if there's any changes between 5.1 to 5.5, right? But I mean, my trust is low, right, at this point. So. And what I can tell you honestly, what you have done is often run, to run checksum table because it is faster. And if there is some false positive, I can recheck your table with MK table checksum, right? Or some other way to validate for if they're really out of sync or not, right? And I would need to do that anyway because checksum table just tell me, oh, you know what? Checksum, checksum is different. I cannot really use that to figure out what is exactly the difference between those tables. And the MK table checksum can help me do that. Replication. We often would do replication of the old system to new, run it for some uh, a period of time, let's say 24 hours, make sure replication still works. There is no error logs in master of a slave, right? Very simple. We want to ensure that replication old to new is working fine. Uh, because that is what we are going to do, have after we upgrade slave but haven't upgraded master. Now, at the same time, we also want to check, to check replication new system to old. Why is that? 
Well, because if you have to do, do the rollback, right, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to maintain some of the old slate, right, on the old version. It is the easiest way to roll back. It's not always going to work, actually, right? In some cases, you'll find out what you, uh, what replicating of a, from an old version to a new version you're trying to use doesn't work for your workload. And in this case, you'll have to plan and say, hey, you know what? If, you have, if, it, if it really doesn't work, then we'll have to bring the system down and restore the backups, right? And then do some uh, reply binary logs. That's fine as well, but you want to know, right? Uh, uh, what you're dealing with, whatever fast rollback will be possible in your case. Now, what is important here is what, even though it is claimed as not supported, it works in most cases, right? At least 5.0 to 5.5 uh, uh, works. Then you also want to test the new to new replication. Because, well, again, it's if your old to new replication worked, it's very unlikely you'll have some problems here. But there have been cases then, uh, because of difference between version, uh, you can see some, uh, some breakages in this case, right? And that especially can happen in the future uh, because, um, let's say, MySQL 5.6, for example, in introduces completely new handshake protocol, which will be only used if both versions are new, right? So don't count on that. And in this case, well, I can tell you in some cases we do upgrade and then actually check this as a part of a normal uh, uh, validation practice, you know, after upgrade, not at the same time. So then what we want to do is to validate uh, replication uh, performance. We want to ensure replication is not slower than new version, right? So what we do in this case is we can do that by measuring the catch-up speed, right? Let's say stop replication and see how long <coughs> it catches up. Is it the same as an old version or not? And then trying to speed up so we uh, can get you out of here quickly. Getting queries for testing, right? We also want to uh, get a set of queries to test. And we can use that either from the full query log or slow query log. Or if it doesn't work, we can use TCP dump to, tra uh, to, uh, to sample production traffic. Then we would take several samples for each query kind, right? because typically running the full workload, let's say for 24 hours through MySQL upgrade will take a lot of time. It's good enough to take some samples, let's say 5, 10, 100 queries, which, or whatever you want. Then what we can do is we can run a single connection test we essentially would run PT upgrade on sample of queries, which will run queries on the new and old systems and validate plans, validate performance, validate results. And then we often would use PT log player to, to run high concurrency tests to make sure at the high concurrency we don't see any performance problems, right? Make sense? Yeah. In both cases, we would take a look at the PT query digest report to understand what we are, all the queries have decent performance. There is no outliers because sometimes you can have new version which runs okay in most cases, but there are let's say plans are like less stable, and one of the, one out of 50 queries right may just be uh, strange. And you also want uh, uh, to make sure there is no queries which are significantly slower. Okay, so what else? Uh, for load testing, some companies they can have complete load testing setup, uh, which is which is great. In this case, you can actually benchmark and test all the application of the new MySQL version. But in many cases, that doesn't happen, so we just have to limit to that in that case. So that's it. Well, that's pretty much it, right? The last thing I wanted to say is what in a lot of cases the upgrade is one of those, let's say. A uh, few cases, like frankly, when I think of working with somebody who had done a lot of upgrades makes help because even if you have, uh, let's say, taken your applications from 5.0 to 5.1, well, this set of problems from 5.1 to 5.5 is different, right? And 5.5 to 5.6 is going to be different again. It's very version dependent, right? So in this case, it may help to involve somebody who had done those, uh, those upgrades before. That's it, thank you.